Thank you very much. It's just been a thrill to have all of you people here this evening and all the things we've gone through in the last few days. We, uh, it's been exciting. We want to move along and we have a long show and so I'm not going to stand here and gab. Many years ago, in fact 1966, one of my first classes in the morning, terrible time to sing, but I had a little ensemble that came together and uh, we tried to get awake together. And in that ensemble was, uh, were, uh, I think, six girls. One of them went on to sing professionally, singing around town, top of the center, and a few other places you can notice in your program. I'd like to introduce to you now Meg Murphy. Well, I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but I will say Larry put me here first so I'd still be awake by the end of the night, you know. I'm hobbling around here. This is a song from Goodbye, Mr. Chips. It's called You and I. You and I will travel far together. We'll pursue our little star together. We'll be happy as we are together. We may never get to heaven, but it's heaven at least to try. You and I are going on together Till the time we have is gone together Watch the evening drawing on together Growing older Growing closer Making memories that light the sky But only time can tell But only love can tell But only we can tell You Till the time we have is gone together Watch the evening drawing on together Growing older Growing closer Making memories That last A few years ago, we had a singing group that was blessed with uh, some songwriters in it. Isn't it isn't often that we get a high school group that, where they want to sit down and write their own charts. But we did have that year, and uh, one of the guys, uh, well, a couple, you're going to hear from several of them this evening, but uh, one of the guys uh, went on and he's writing songs, he's doing some recordings, and Ron Ferlito's name is in your program under the Who's Who. And we'd like to bring to you now Mr. Ron Ferlito over here at the piano.
Yesterday I saw a man lying all alone in the street Looking for compassion and he asked me just for something to eat Yesterday I saw a woman living in the castle of sand What she needed was a reason why the life she leads is always so bland What is a way to make reason a rhyme of your life when you find love you must live love to make it last or you'll lose it fast once you find love you must live love or it will die don't ask me why because you know in your heart of the death that you owe from the start Once upon a time I thought that things all in the past Once I gave my life to Jesus I thought the joy would always last But when I started drifting the field and started lifting away You gotta keep on giving for all the joy of living to stay What is the way to make reason a rhyme of your life? When you find love you must give love to make it last or you'll lose it fast once you find love you must live love or it will die don't ask me why cause you know in your heart of the death that you owe from the start to feature next Mr. Scott Whipple. Scott left here uh, well, several years ago. He was the drummer with the singers and uh, also sang in the choir and so forth. And Scott, uh, first year after graduation, he went on the road with Fred Waring. He was on the road with Mr. Waring for three and a half years and uh, now is uh, touring with a lounge group. Uh, Scott was fortunate enough to uh, talk to the manager and they got their band booked in town tonight. So uh, Scott's here and he has to leave and head out to do uh, a thing at nine o'clock. So I'd like to introduce you to Scott Whipple. Life pulled us apart And now it's breaking my heart Cause I know what we could have been How I'm needing you here and I start thinking too much About the thrill of your touch How I'd feel if I saw you here Can the better times reappear? Can the past all be forgotten? Will you ever know I need you back again? I tried to forget Still I'm not over you 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are the Grandview Singers, obviously. We're very happy to be here this evening, and we're glad that you're here. The program says we say this every night, so uh, we have some old tunes, new tunes, some things maybe you haven't heard before. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the music by the Grandview Singers. Thank you. Sweet little joy. 
Thank you very much. I'd now like to introduce our next song. It's from America's only opera. The song is Summertime, featuring solo by Michelle Camerucci. While the girls get their props, I'd like to introduce this song. It's a 1950s hit by Cole Porter called From This Moment On.
do it. Let's fall in love. Cold cape cut clams against the wings. Do it. Even lazy jellyfish. Do it. Let's do it. Let's fall in This is Didi Waltz, this is Didi Monaco. Didi is a soloist with us, and she sings here in Columbus, uh, does some recordings, and uh, we'd like to bring to you, her to you at this point. Didi? Thank you. I'm gonna do a Vicky Carr song for you tonight. Tell myself what's done is done. I 
tell myself, ha, don't be a fool, play the field, have a lot of fun. It's easy when you play it cool. I tell myself, don't be a chump. when the phone rings and I jump and as I grab the phone I pray Can you imagine what it would be like to have all these people at one time, you know, in the choir? Well, we had them all last night in the choir room. I didn't know if the uh, roof was going to stay on. I, such an awesome sound in that small room over there, but it was really neat. Some great talent here tonight, and you're going to enjoy all of it. Our next one is a young man who uh, did some songwriting for us while he was with us. In fact, he was a member of that other group that uh, we talked to when we introduced Ron. And uh, Brian sings here in town on the weekends. Uh, does some lounge singing, and we think you're going to enjoy Mr. Brian Mahoney over to piano. Brian? Steve, Steve Buck is accompanying me on drums and Jack Lawner on bass. that love was just a fairy tale until that first hello until that first smile but if I had to do it all again I wouldn't change a thing cause this love is everlasting suddenly 
Life has new meaning to me. There's beauty up above, things we never take notice of. You wake up and suddenly you're in love. Girl, you're everything a man could want and more. One thousand words are not enough to say what I feel inside. Holding hands as we walk along the shore. Never felt like this before. Now you're all I'm living for. Suddenly, life has new meaning to me. There's beauty up above, things we never take notice of. You wake up and suddenly you're in love. Each day I pray this love affair would last forever. Ooh, suddenly. Life has new meaning to me. There's beauty up above, things we never take notice of. You wake up and suddenly you're in love. I'd like to introduce to you Ray Marie Swart. Something that the angels don't plan Fish gotta swim and birds gotta fly I gotta love one man till I die Can't help loving that man Tell me he's lazy, tell me he's slow 
dead man of mine My many ship is ain't good for nothing to He's my man just the same He ain't around here when there is work to do Thank you very much. I hope you, uh, we've had a lot of fun with this next section of the show. Back in our closets over in the choir room, we have every costume that we ever wore. When we did the 10th year anniversary, we put them on mannequins down through the hallway here. But for the 20th, we had to make them live. So uh, we hope that you enjoy it. In fact, when we saw them all together, we'd forgotten how short some of the hymn lines were. <laughs> Tom you, and, uh, Tom, you and Cindy ready to go over there? We're ready. Okay. Over on this side. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to 20 Years of Fashion with the Grandview Singers. My lovely, if somewhat dull, co-host, Cindy Ferlito Vaughn, and I are ready to take you on a little trip through memory lane. Now, I know style shows are really boring, but Larry made us do this, so you might as well sit back and enjoy it. Oh, come on, Tom. The Grandview Singers, or the Swing Choir, as most of you know it, has been around for 20 years. Every show has had an excitement and a contemporary appeal in the way that they dance and the songs that they've picked, but also in the clothes that they've worn. Yeah, right. Fashions have changed rapidly, and sometimes we see rather dramatic contrasts from one year to the next. Let's walk through those 20 years of music and fashion and have a chuckle. Or a gut-wrenching laugh at what we used to wear. And keep in mind that these outfits were on the cutting edge of fashion the years that they were worn. So as we used to say in the 70s, these were really hot. Yeah, boy, you got them really excited now. I see people foaming at the mouth out there. All the models that we're using tonight are past singers, but they weren't necessarily wearing the outfits that they used to wear when they were in the singers. In other words, the models are the few people we could find that haven't uh, spread out too much to get into the old costumes. <laughs> okay, we'll begin our show now. We will open with Mary Lou Swagger Sinzinger from 1966 singers in a yellow taffeta dress with white gloves. Originally, 
Originally, these dresses were worn with a matching chiffon overlay. It looked great on the hanger, but when the girls put them on, they looked like maternity dresses. So, needless to say, they didn't use the chiffon overlays very long. Yeah, you may find this hard to believe, but the maternity look wasn't really in for young women in 1966. The guys took a safer route and just wore their own coats and ties. Don't you mean the cheaper route? <laughs> okay, in 1967 and 68, a little variety was added to the singers, and we had Christmas dresses that were done in red velvet with white lace. This is Denise Webb modeling for us now. Each girl made her own dress that year, and as I understand, one of the singers, Tawny Halbert, was actually finishing her dress on the bus on the way to their first Christmas show. Yeah, one of those thing, reasons that Larry Weaver's continued to lose hair over the years. He just loves last minute projects. <laughs> Not to be left out, the guys rang in Christmas this year in a black tux as modeled by Brad Smith. That sure is classy, and for you guys, that's amazing. The new outfits were so well accepted at Christmas, the group decided to adopt a new look, look for spring of 1968. Kathy Monaco Edelblut is wearing the Grandview colors in a white jacket, blue turtleneck, and blue skirt, which was, the style was influenced by the Beatles. The guys adopted the same look in the contrasting outfit that Paul Damiani is showing you now. White pants, blue jacket, and a white turtleneck. Um, Tom, didn't you forget to mention that that was a used band jacket? In 1968 and 69, we brought yet another new look to the singers. Judy DeWilde is wearing a burnt orange jumper with an off-white blouse trimmed with lace. Looks more like a school librarian to me than an entertainer. Oh, come on. It's really, really a very nice outfit, and it's great to note that this year the guys got a real outfit to go with it. Mike Perez is now modeling that first real outfit. The green coat and check pants with a striped tie. Finally, I think the guys learned what class is. Yeah, but they had to drive to Bexley to buy this outfit. Can you imagine how embarrassing it was to drive to Bexley to buy clothes? In 1969 and 70, the school year brought another new look for the singers. The girls sported a bright pink princess style dress modeled by Beth Foley. Now that's not a librarian. I'm so glad you finally like something, Tom. The guys added a dark green pair of pants and a dark green tie to the last year's outfit, as we see modeled by Brian Marcus. Yeah, and at least they didn't have to drive to Bexley for this pair of pants. Well, we're finally getting to the part of the show that's not so boring. Robin Tucker is wearing the outfit for the 70-71 group. Featured a brightly colored wraparound skirt, a white bodysuit, the guys just loved that zipper down the front. And at a certain point in the show, the lights went up, the music got hot, and the skirts came off. To reveal this very stylish gold hot pants outfit. No wonder you like this year, Tom, it figures. But you know what? I bet you don't know how you put your hot pants out if they catch on fire. Gee, Cindy, how do you put your hot pants out if they catch on fire? You use your pantyhose. Ha 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 ha. Oh. Dave Colley is showing us the guy's outfit for this year. They finally ditched the Bexley clothes and really looked sharp in this blue coat, blue shirt, and white pants outfit. Blue and white again? How original. Give me a break, woman. Moving ahead into 71-72, we're really into my favorite part of this little trip through time. The hairlines were coming down. All except Larry's, of course. And the hemlines were really coming down. Or up. Larry searched all around for a new material and new outfit this year, and he thought that he came up with just the perfect thing. Only, I don't think he found just enough of it. And his wife, Pat, told him that it wouldn't work very good with the patterns that they picked. But he didn't care. He said that it was just great. So they went ahead and made them. But we'll see the result when Gina Harder comes out. It was a good color, 
and the prints were good, but it was just a little bit too small, so it didn't give any flow to the dress, and it just yeah, didn't work the way they wanted it to. You gotta love the hemline, Cindy. The guy set off this outfit in new white blazers, blue pants, and a blue shirt with striped tie as modeled by Dave Grass. Oh, it's white over blue instead of blue over white. Now, that's very original. I feel it's safe to say that no one was looking at us anyway. Probably not. The hot pants were so popular that we brought them back again in 1972 and 73. Antoinette Ludwig Massman is modeling the new green color that was picked for this year. We also changed to the high-necked white bodysuit. Yeah, no more zipper down the front. Aww. Cindy's comments, by the way, are no exception. The guys took so much flack for all the blue and white outfits that this year they cleaned out Lazarus' entire supply of the snappy outfit that Sean Fitzpatrick is showing you now. This outfit also came in green and orange as well, but the yellow worked best under the lights. Sure, a 100% polyester banana suit. Ronald McDonald never looks so good. Laura Zachary Atkins is modeling the outfit that the women went into in 73 and 74. It features pink pajama pants and a pink bodysuit worn with pearls and gold jewelry. Now, Cindy's going to claim that pajama pants were just in this year. But as I remember it, the first time the skirts came off this year, we immediately saw that we needed to cover those legs up. Hey, that was my year, Tom. I rest my case. That's not fair. I was in the year before, too, and we wore the hot pants. Anyway, the real reason why the girls went to the pink hot or the, the pink pajama pants was because they had enough class and enough taste to know that it was time to change their outfits. But the guys, including you, Tom, stayed with the 100% polyester banana suits. In 1974 and 75, the girls discovered the miracle of a synthetic fabric called Kiana. The singer's girls have used this Kiana fabric in every year for the last 10 years because it, is, it wears so well, it's washable and it's lightweight, holds its shape. Here's Mary Milano wearing the first outfit we had in Kiana in a pantsuit. It allowed for more active choreography that the singers were adopting that year and it still maintained the illusion of a gown when they stood still. The men, of course, that year were still bananas. Be patient, we have a new outfit coming. Karen Faistel is now going to show you the new red velvet Christmas dress that was actually introduced in 1974. The fur was added to bring the hemlines down for a fashionable length for 1975. This dress dropped the white lace from the earlier Christmas outfit and it featured a scooped neckline. And let me tell you, that taught us girls how not to bow. Yeah, but it was great doing choreography next to you just the same. Don't you ever change. The guys finally dropped the yellow Lazarus outfit. Finally. It was introduced in 73 and stepped out in this snappy three-piece suit that Kevin Quinn is modeling for you now. A plaid open neck shirt completed this costume. Well, the originality was showing, but from banana suit one to banana suit two, how many more years do we have to look at bananas, Tom? Give me a break. <laughs> In 1977, the lighter pastel colors came in and the girls responded with the pantsuit that Paula McNeil is now wearing. It features a light Kiana fabric again with a chic crossover neckline. The guys added a white shirt and dark maroon tie to the previous year's outfit for a more dressy shows, as modeled by Steve Buck. Gee, a white shirt and tie. That must have cost a bundle. Our next model is Julie Pierce Winters, modeling the 7980 edition of the girls' outfits. Sleeves were added this year to the basic pattern of the previous year, and most of the dresses were remade in brighter colors. This year's women just couldn't fit into the outfits the Munchkins wore the year before. Tom, that's not very nice. Well, you told me not to say Larry hi hired the women's field hockey team to sing soprano this year, so I didn't say it. You're really hopeless. 
You know, this outfit really illustrates uh, another important need, the need to check costuming under actual show conditions uh, for the lighting. The material's a little lighter than the previous costume, and since the singers were using black light in the show this year, Julie Pierce, our model, was the first girl to find out that white lingerie was not a good color to wear. She was checking out the light shortly before the first show and found out that the costume disappears and the lingerie doesn't. <laughs> you learn something new all the time. The guys this year went to a black tux for all of the shows. It added a classic elegance to the show that was lacking in all the previous years. This time, they were men, not bananas. Here's Dave Kriska modeling the tux that was bought this year and is still worn by the current group. In 1981, the fashion changed again to a simple one-piece gown that Sherry Izard is now modeling. The dresses were worn in assorted, subdued pastel colors and were slid up the side to make choreography and the movement more easy. The outfit was so popular and wore so well that it was used for the following four years with only minor changes to accommodate different sizes and a couple new colors. Well, that brings us up to the current singers. This year's girls are wearing the wraparound dress being modeled by current singer Heidi Hoy. The colors are a little deeper and richer, and the outfit comes with a cape to cover bare shoulders. Sorry guys, even though it's a wraparound like the skirts of 74, this one doesn't come off. Escorting Heidi is her brother Paul, also a current singer, in the black tux that the guys continue to wear. Well that brings us to the end of the style show. We hope you've enjoyed this trip down memory lane through 20 years of singer's fashion. <laughs> And this also brings us to the close of the first portion of our show. We'll be taking about a 15 minute intermission and then we'll be back to entertain you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. But if you can't find a seat, don't be too disappointed. After all, tonight, it's standing room only.
Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Schnazola himself, Jimmy Durante. Ding, a ding, a dee, a ding, a do, a ding, a dee. It's got the whole world swooning. Ding, a ding, a dee, a ding, a do, a ding, a dee. It's got the whole world swooning. Ding, a ding, a dee, a ding, a do, a ding, a dee. That note was given to me by Bing Crosby. And was he glad to get rid of it? <laughs> Simply means ding a ding a do, a ding a dee. Good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are. great to be in the audience during those wonderful days of live entertainment. Oh, I'm sure it was. But isn't it exciting that every night at dozens of theaters, people still stand in line to buy up standing room only tickets to see real musical theater that was born and raised right here in America. What do you mean? Well, I mean that on only one street in the world can a person still go and see and hear the best entertainers in the world, singing and dancing to the songs that have become such an important part of the American way of life. Do you mean Fiddler on the Roof? Yes. Are you talking about Grease? Sure. How about a chorus line? Of course, I'm talking about Broadway. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. The corn is as high as an elephant's eye And it looks like it's climbing clear up to the sky
Once again, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for inviting us back into your homes on another Saturday night with SRO Radio. We hope that you will enjoy tonight's big band sounds as they're played for you live from the elegant ballroom of the Plaza Hotel. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by the generous makers of Lather Shave, where every shave makes facing the world a little smoother. Tonight's guests will include the incomparable Duke Ellington. The unpredictable Ella Fitzgerald, 
and of course, the return engagement of the lovely Andrews sisters. Do what you want, 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 do what you want
I would like to introduce to you, I tried to do it there and I'm not sure that uh, you all caught it, but I do want to take time for the tremendous, tremendous person who did all of that choreography and who choreographs for the Grandview Singers, Mr. Andy Haynes, right in here. Bob Grass, are you here? You're here. Okay. Mr. Bob Grass, I'd like to call front and center. This man sang with us a few years ago, sang low bass. And uh, there was a uh, little routine that they did during their show. So we'd like to sort of go back to some nostalgia with Mr. You have a beard. I just talked to you on the phone. I haven't even seen you. How you doing? Nice to see you. <laughs> Mr. Bob Grass, right here. As Larry told you, my name's Bob Grass, and I was a 1977 graduate from the Singers and from Grandview Heights. And I was in school, sports was my big thing. Baseball was, at least. I'm still a pretty big fan, such a big fan that I started my own ball team, which I believe is going to be a great hey, team. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, no, my brother Dave. Uh, excuse me, everyone, and excuse me for interrupting you, right. Bob, but uh, did I just hear you say that you're starting your own ball team? Yes. Well, uh... <laughs> I'm a pretty good ball player. Do you think uh, I could get on the team? Well, sure, Dave. Why not? Great. Uh, in that case, then, I'd like to know some of the names of your ball players, though. So if I meet them on the street or in the ballpark, I'd be able to say hello to them. OK, but of course, today, a lot of ball players go by some pretty strange names. Oh, you mean nicknames? Yeah, nicknames, pet names like Dizzy Dean or Goose Gossage. Yeah. Anyways, on the bags we have who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find out. I said, Dave, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. Oh, no, wait a minute. Are you the manager? Yes. Do you know the fellow's names? Of course I do. Well, then, who's on first? Yes. I need the fellow's name. But that's it. That's who? Yes. Oh, the guy on first base. Who's on first? <laughs> what are you asking me for? I'm not asking you, Dave. I'm telling you who's on first. And I'm asking you who's on first. But that's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. So tell me. Who? The guy on first base. Who? The first baseman. Who's on first? Look, have you got a first baseman on first base? Of course I do. Do you pay him? Sure. All right, then. When you pay off the first baseman at the end of the month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. <laughs> Why? The man's entitled to it, isn't he? Who is? Yes. So who gets it? Sure he does. <laughs> now, look. Uh, all I want to find out is what's the first baseman's name? No, what's on second? Who's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. No, he's on third. Now, how did I get on third base? You just mentioned the man's name. 
If I just mentioned the third baseman's name, then what did I say his name was? What's on second? Who's on second? He's on first. I don't know. No, he's on third. There I go, back on third again. <laughs> have you got a pitcher? I wouldn't have much of a team without a pitcher. Will you tell me the pitcher's name? Tomorrow. You don't want to tell me today? But Dave, I'm telling you today. Then tell me. Tomorrow. All right. What time? What time what? What time tomorrow are you going to tell me who's pitching? But who isn't pitching? I'll who's break on? your neck if you say who's on first. What can I say then, Dave? I just want to know what's the pitcher's name. What's on second? Who's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. Third, Third base. base. <laughs> All right. Let's try a different angle to this whole mess. Okay. Now, uh, I like to catch. All right. Okay. Let's say I'm catching in a game when the pitcher throws the ball and the guy that's up bunts the ball. Okay. Now, me being a good catcher, I go to throw the guy out at first base. Yes. So I pick up the ball and I throw it to who? Now, that's the first thing you said right today, Dave. I don't even know what I'm talking about! So that's all you have to do. Is to throw the ball to first base. Yes. So who gets it? Naturally. <laughs> See how simple that is, Dave? Naturally? Naturally. Oh, so I pick up the ball and I throw it to naturally. No, you throw it to first base. So who gets it? Naturally. So I throw the ball to naturally. No, you throw the ball to who? Naturally. Yes. That's what I said. No, you didn't, Dave. I said I pick up the ball and I throw it to naturally. But you don't. You throw it to who? Naturally. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Don't get excited. Who's getting excited? No, your me. voice. Who's getting excited? Not me. You're left fielder. Why? Because. No, he's in center field. <laughs> all right, all right. I think I've got it. I hope so. Now, uh, I pick up the ball and I throw it to first base. Who drops the ball so the guy runs to second? Who picks up the ball? He throws it to what? What throws the ball to? I don't know. I don't know if there's a ball back to who. Double play. Could be. Now, the next guy up hits a long fly ball to because. Why? I don't know. He's on third, and I don't give a damn. What'd you say? I said I don't give a damn. Oh, yeah. He's our shortstop. We would like to bring you Ms. Teresa Sensioni.
we'd like to introduce to you now Patty Locke. Thank you. Thank you. You made me love you I didn't want to do it I didn't want to do it You made me want you And all the time you knew it I guess you always knew it You made me happy sometimes You made me glad But there were times, dear you made me feel so bad You made me sigh for I didn't want to tell you I didn't want to tell you I want some love that's true Yes, I do, indeed I do You know I do Give me, give me, give me, give me What I cry for You know you got the brand of kisses that I die for You know you made me love you You made me love you I didn't want to do it I didn't want to do it You made me want you And all the time you knew it I guess you always knew it. You made me happy sometimes. You made me glad. But there were times, oh dear, you made me feel so bad. You made me sigh for I didn't want to tell you. No, I didn't want to tell you I want some love That's true Yes, I do Did I do You know I do Give me, give me, give me, give me What I cry for You know you got the brand of kisses That I die for introduce to you Jerry Lawner. He's a percussionist with the Andy Lawner Trio. Uh, Andy used to, uh, many of you remember, play on Channel 6 and Sally Flower Show and a few other things around town, the Andy Lawner Trio. At that point they were all grown up men, so Andy decided it'd be cheaper if he had his own boys. So uh, he raised four of, or three of them. Two of them are with him, one's on the road playing drums. So uh, I think it's sort of neat myself as uh, now dad goes out at night to play the gigs and the wedding receptions and so forth, and it's Dad and these boys who make up the Andy Lawner Trio. I think it's sort of neat. Jerry is a percussion major at Capital University, and uh, Jerry's going to do his marimba for us. Jerry?
Thank you. We'd like to bring back uh, Patty Locke at this point, and this time she's going to be joined by Sally Phelps Sauer. Sally uh, has been uh, singing in and around Columbus, been singing with some bands on the weekends, and uh, is uh, pretty active in, in that type of thing, although she took a time out for, uh, to have a baby this winter. That slowed her down a little bit, but uh, she uh, wants to get back into it. And so we'd like to, they've worked out a really neat duet, and uh, so we'd like to bring you now Sally and Patty. Someday he'll come along, the man I love, and he'll be big and strong, the man I love, and when he looks my way, I'll do my best to make him stay. He'll look at me and smile, I'll understand, and in a little while, he'll take my hand, and though it sounds absurd, I know we both won't say.
I'd like to introduce to you now a gal from Florida, and uh, one of the gals in the last group sings soprano, does some commercial work, doing as your book says there, does some things in the Miami Vice show. I'd like to introduce to you now Sarah Robinson. chance on love here I slide again about to take that ride again starry eyed again taking a chance on love I thought the cards were a frame up I never would try but now I'm taking the game up and the ace of hearts is high things are mending now I see a rain have a happy ending now, taking a chance on love. Here I go again, I hear those trumpets blow again, all the glow again, taking a chance on love. Here I slide again, about to take that ride again, starry-eyed again, taking a chance on love. I thought the cards were a frame up, I never would try, but now I'm Taking the game up, and the ace of hearts is high. Things are mending now. I see a rainbow blending now. We'll have a happy ending now. Taking a chance on love. Taking a chance on love. Thank you. Well. I did my very, very best to recreate the Miami climate right here in the gymnasium. Do you like it? <laughs> Don't throw things, please. Um, this next, next song I'd like to do um, as a tribute to the man who wrote it, since he left us recently, um, Harold Arlen, who wrote um, many, many, many wonderful songs, but this is one of my favorites.
want to thank you so much. We have one thing to do, and we and the alumni, we'd just like to sing one more time for you. So if you, all of you out there, 1986 singers, in-town alumni, out-of-town alumni, all of you who have come near and far, let's take the stage one more time. We could write a book on what has happened. We won't do that and we won't bore you. A couple of things. One, we have people here tonight on the stage. Let me see if I got them all. California, Texas, Hawaii, um, Wisconsin, Colorado, Missouri. Uh, let's see. Um, I said Texas, New Orleans, Ohio. Florida, Ohio, <laughs> uh, Georgia, South Carolina, Kentucky, uh, New Jersey, three from Washington, D.C., uh, Michigan, um, three from Cleveland, four from three, two or three from Cincinnati, I think. Anybody else I missed? <laughs> Unusual story. Lots of them came out of here. I have to tell you this one. I received a letter from Lieutenant... Mike Young up here. It was amazing. We always laughed in the inner circle. We'd have people in Grandview come up and say, is there a show going on? What's going on? I'll tell you the story. We have a singer, unfortunately, who was going to be here and couldn't be. His name's Jeff DeWeese. It's Captain Jeff DeWeese, United States Marine Corps. Jeff was, uh, our government evidently was doing some uh, relation work um, maneuvers with the Egyptian army. Uh, Jeff DeWeese was uh, doing and, con and uh, controlling an artillery barrage. Uh, Mike Young let a parachute drop of the 82nd Airborne. This was roughly in February. Uh, Jeff gets on the ground. His letter said, or Mike gets on the ground, his letter said they literally ran into each other. Jeff says, hey, you going back for the Grandview Singer Alumni Reunion? <laughs> Mike says, I don't know anything about it. What's going on? So the two guys sat down in the Egyptian desert and discussed when they were going to meet back here. <laughs> nice to have them. We hope that you've enjoyed the show. It's been a pleasure having you. And um, we think our final selection here will sort of um, say just how we feel about everything. <laughs>